Hey, what's up guys? So time for a Bidax power supply upgrade, specifically going for a beefier power supply that has a bunch of different outputs to power a bunch of different Bidaxes. Now, why am I doing this upgrade in the first place? Well, there's three reasons here primarily. Uh, number one, well, the primary reason is the fact that I keep buying more and more Bidaxes because these are a lot of fun and new versions are coming out and I want more. And so instead of having a bunch of different power supplies, I figured I'd get like one really good one uh, that has a bunch of outputs and it makes it really easy for me to connect more Bidaxes as they arrive. Arrive. Uh, second, I've been finding there's a variety of different power supplies that different manufacturers supply, and some of them are better than others. Uh, for example, I know some of the earlier ones were uh, 4 amp power supplies, which sometimes isn't enough, especially if you get into overclocking. I've actually had one of my 4 amp power supplies fry on me when I was pushing uh, one of my Supras, uh, and it died and I had to replace it. I actually replaced it with a 6 amp power supply, which has been much better. Uh, for this reason, I've noticed a lot of manufacturers now switching from 4 amps to 5 amps, uh, or even 6 amps in some cases as well. Uh, and on a related note, the third reason is the fact that, well, I just got two new Bidax Gammas. But unfortunately, neither one of the Gammas would actually power on and hash, even though they were up and running. Uh, now, luckily, after a bunch of troubleshooting, I finally figured out what the culprit is. And a big thank you to David St. Ange, for helping me identify and resolve this issue. Uh, essentially, the new 10 amp power supplies that I was provided by Decentral when I bought these gammas, for whatever reason, these aren't working properly and they're not able to allow these gammas to hash. And I don't have extra power supplies, but luckily I just got this new beefed up power supply that has multiple outputs, so I'm gonna use this one uh, to go ahead and get my gammas up and running. Now, this power supply that I'm going to be using, it's just one that I bought on Amazon. I'll link to it down in the description below. It's basically a 5-volt, 40-amp power supply. It can supply 200 watts. They have different sizes available to choose from and whatnot. And then you can choose whatever connector you want to attach to it based on whatever device you're going to be connecting. And down in the description, I'll also link to the proper connector that you need if you're running some of these bit axes. And so with that said, let's go ahead and uh, start putting everything together here and get all these bit axes up and running with an upgraded power supply. All right, so here's a look at the uh, power supply and then the cables that we're going to attach over here to get these connected to the bit axe. Uh, now, let's first start by taking a look at the uh, power supply itself. So uh, taking a look around, uh, these are going to be the connectors right here where we're going to be attaching everything. Uh, over here on the side, there's a selector switch if you're running 110 volts or 220. There's a little switch right inside there that you can flip. It looks like it comes default at 110. Uh, and then just taking a look, as you can see, as I mentioned before, uh, it runs at 5 volts, which is what we need for our bit axes. Uh, and this particular one uh, can supply up to 40 amps. They do have other models that can output more, so you can always run the math and see kind of what you need here uh, for your setup. Um, now, basically, the next thing I want to take a look at are these actual connectors here. Uh, so they've got a couple different connectors here, and they actually list uh, over on the website exactly uh, what everything is for. Uh, so we've got our AC live wire right here, which should be our positive. Uh, and then we've got our neutral and our ground. Uh, interestingly, it doesn't actually come with the uh, power cables, and so I'm gonna have to, I guess, harvest a cable, cut off the ends, and then just uh, attach it right there. And then we've got uh, options here to connect three different devices. So we've got our common ground uh, and our voltage right here. Interestingly, in the documentation, it actually says this runs at uh, negative five volts DC, and this is gonna be positive five, so there might actually be a 10 volt difference here. So I'll have to double check and see uh, with my voltmeter to see if I should tap into the ground here or if I should go into the common. Uh, and then it also has a potentiometer right back in there so that I can kind of like fine tune the exact output voltage here. It says uh, it's adjustable by 10%. Now, the easiest thing to do is just to buy a pre-made cable that has the three bare wires exposed on the other end. They even have some that have on-off switches built in as well. I didn't realize this unit didn't come with one of these, otherwise I would have ordered one ahead of time, but I'll link to one of these down in the description below. What I'm gonna wind up doing is just taking one of these uh, cables that I've got used for another device. I just ordered a replacement, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna take this, uh, lop off the end here, and then uh, kind of wire everything up. Now, as far as what we're looking at here on this end, uh, we just wanna make sure this is gonna be our neutral. Uh, this is going to be our live or hot connector, and this right here at the bottom is going to be the ground. And we'll just kind of make sure uh, everything connects up properly uh, right over here on the power supply. And taking a look at this particular power cable, it looks like the blue wire internally is going to be our uh, hot wire here like this. The brown wire is my neutral wire, and then the yellow wire is going to be my ground wire. So we'll go ahead and remove this uh, little cover here like this. So I'm gonna start loosening all the connectors here for the uh, input power wires. Then I'll wrap the wire around the screw in such a way that when I turn the screw clockwise, everything tightens down instead of loosens on me. And then we'll do the same thing for the neutral and the ground wire as well. Then we can plug it in and hope nothing blows up here. Awesome, well, that's a good sign. Uh, we've got ourselves a power light there uh, on the power supply. 
And then probing around at the power supply, I'm really curious to see if I'm going to get 5 or 10 volts DC here, uh, hooking up to the uh, DC connectors. And it looks like, yeah, this is 5 volts, so that's good to see. If I hook it up to the common ground uh, right there, that actually gives me a 0 volts. So I guess that's just for the AC. So yeah, it looks like I am getting my uh, 5 volts. Uh, not exactly. I guess I can tune that a little bit, but yeah, that is how we're going to hook things up. Next, I can take these connectors that I picked up here for the bit axes, uh, and I can just grab one of them, and then it's pretty straightforward. They've got uh, a power and a ground, and so I can just connect them right over there. Now, these cables come with pretty short little tips here. If needed, you can always strip away a little bit more of the insulation, but I think this should be okay to just kind of stick in there. And yeah, it actually looks fine uh, just with these connectors. I've obviously uh, unplugged the power supply for this part, but basically you can just kind of go in here uh, and loosen uh, one of these screws a little bit, and then you can just kind of stick the uh, tip of the connector right there underneath, and then just tighten everything back down, and it'll clamp right down into place. Then we repeat the process two more times, and now we've got ourselves uh, all three connectors here uh, ready for our bit axes. And so with that up and running now, let's go ahead and uh, power uh, this back on. These are now live, and uh, moment of truth, let's go ahead and plug in ourselves a bit axe gamma and let it get up to speed. So there we go, everything's powering on, and hopefully, assuming all is well, uh, this thing should start hashing here shortly. And yep, there we go. Uh, let the hashing begin. So awesome, I'm really happy to see that. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting uh, my other bit axes set up. And there we go, now I've got three different bit axes all plugged into this upgraded power supply. All running here with these cables. If needed, I could always connect more of these cables and plug in some additional ones, uh, but we are good to go. And if you'd like a power supply like this, uh, along with the cables and stuff that you'll need, I'll link to all the different parts that are required uh, down in the video description. Uh, now, at the moment, I've actually got uh, two different gammas as well as one of my overclocked bit or uh, Supras plugged in. I've been noticing uh, that this particular gamma seems to be more stable than that one. This one seems to overheat after a couple minutes, so I'm gonna have to experiment with settings and additional cooling and whatnot. But anyways, now that I've got the power supply stuff handled, I can go ahead and start doing uh, some more videos on like, you know, how to set up the bit axes, how you can experiment with adding some additional pooling or overclocking them and stuff. So definitely subscribe. There you go. You can see that's the issue right there. So as we're experimenting and learning with all this kind of stuff, uh, and I've been chatting with people online, I'll definitely be posting more videos uh, as we go. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're doing great. And I'll see you in the next one.